Uh, August 8th was the day of the fires. The day of the fires was a fairly normal day here on Maui. Um, there was a lot of sunshine. The day was a normal Tuesday. We had our staff meeting. I remember uh, lots of wind and really, really the strongest wind I've ever felt in my life. It was a strange day. It was windy. Down power lines, down trees. I remember I was just in shock the whole time of what was going on. A lot of worry, a lot of confusion. A lot of anxiety. And the heart so fast. We kept getting uh, reports of how terrible it was, how devastating, uh, how much human life, how much loss there was. Pretty overwhelming. Are we going to lose our home? Are we going to lose our animals? I mean, everything's going to be burned up at this point. <sighs> it's. Day one, people from our church would take their pickups down and buy in bulk everything that we could get. We started buying air mattresses from Walmart and from Target, and we had somebody who was down there, and he just started doing loads out to his pickup, and he was just filling it with air mattresses and lanterns and just anything that he could think of that might help them up at the community center. I was just happy that I was doing something to help. I prayed over it, you know, while I was driving. I was like, God, please calm me down so I can you know, do what I can to help everyone else. I don't want to let my fear you know, make it worse for the situation. He collected every mattress he could, every shelf was cleared, and we were able to supply over 250 mattresses that night. I didn't hesitate. I mean, I know a lot of people might say that, but in my head I was thinking, like, God gave me this opportunity. And then, Dylan went back up to the community center and he called me and he said, the community center is full, they don't have beds, I'm gonna have people come stay at the church. You know, it's one giant room, so everyone's sleeping together in this huge room. I came over, I was grabbing blankets, we got a hold of some of our church members, they brought some futons, air mattresses, blankets, pillows, and Dylan started bringing down groups of people and I think we had 15 that first night. Anytime one of them would leave to go back to the mainland, we'd pick up another family, and um, the goal was to keep the church full. So <laughs> it was full for a long time. And that marked day one. The next day, I remember we knew we wanted to do whatever the community needed. We wanted to help them as their needs arise. The phone was ringing off the hook. People. With, with needs. I remember that first week, I was at this church for roughly around like 70 hours in one week. I was just over here, you know, scrambling, driving to places, picking up supplies. So when I saw the sign for the fire relief, I reached out and Dylan was just so welcoming. We have never done anything like this. Um, there's disasters, you know, we have hurricane season, but nothing to this, to this degree, of course, and so, we're all figuring it out as we go. We defined our roles and we were like, you know, this is what you're good at, this is what you're kind of doing already in the church, but how about you apply it to this, this new thing and do it well. And so we really tried to split up jobs so none of us would get overwhelmed. Every single day we would um, spend between ten and twenty thousand dollars. I know we've done about sixty thousand pounds of produce, and at each of those distribution days, we have produce, we have coolers, we had clothes, groceries, boots. We would have hundreds of cars come every Saturday. We would do it. We just tried to do what we could with what we had, and um, we just trusted God that you know the money was going to flow. Our board was on 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 it. They were like, "Yeah, let's do it." and they just agreed to that, which was super cool. We've received a lot of donations as well, and so we've, we're trying to just get it out there to the community. I just give God glory, I give God praise. He brought us to Pukulani, which means opening of heaven, and we see that, we see God's hand on us here. Uh, the heavens did open for us to come here, and we just see God all over the place. Pukanaz is an unconventional church. It's small but mighty. 
We're inspired by the beginnings of the Nazarene Church. We're here for a lot of broken people in this world, and so we just try and fill that need. I feel like the community knows to go to Pukulani Nazarene. Every single day, there's a line of cars. We have people who come here who aren't Christians, and we still love them. I believe that love has no bounds, and it's active. And I think we try our best to, to put that to practice. Long term should be at the forefront of our minds because a lot of these organizations, they rushed in headfirst, and that's great. That's super awesome that they did that. But now, as it's coming out of the news, they're pulling back. And we live here, and we're not going to go anywhere. These things take a long time. It's not over. It's far, far from over. The need is still just as great. It just looks different. And so that's how we approach it. That's how we think about it. You know, the fire was tragic, and we only can move forward. We started with distribution of supplies, water, etc. But now it's just kind of more the long-term goal for housing, because housing is going to take a while for Lahaina to be rebuilt. With that, we want to be a long-term beacon in the community and help fight the housing crisis. And so we've started to build some small houses just on our property and commit ourselves to being a part of the solution. People think it's paradise. They definitely have an idea like, oh, you're so lucky you get to live there. And it is a beautiful place, but it also is, it's a home to people and it's just like living somewhere else. And so we have normal days, normal jobs, normal lives. You know, it can be absolutely beautiful around you, but if you don't have food, you don't have water, you don't have a place to, you know, lay your head at night, it's just like any other place. And so to be able to offer that to people, to put them on their feet and have them actually have some respite from, from what they've suffered, uh, I think that's most important. And so we're trying to meet those needs and then not just put them into a home, but to, to provide counseling and, and other types of services so they can get back on their feet. Some people might think that we're good now, but I just, I would love for people to know that there's still a lot of need here and they could get involved from wherever they are to help out. These fires have affected our community, but at the end of the day, we're still here. You know, we might have a scrape on our knee, but we're gonna build, we're gonna grow, we're gonna heal from that, we're gonna come back stronger.